Vampire Squid was a mystery in the last century. Nowadays, it's probably a commonly known animal. I'm sure there are many videos on Vampire Squid already. So, why am I making this video? Well, let's just say... Personal reason. So, let me brought up the question. What exactly is Vampire Squid? While Vampire Squid is named Vampire Squid, it's actually not a squid. And not a vampire, of course. It's closely related to octopus, but not an octopus either. They are their own group, Vampiromorpha. Or I guess it's usually called Vampiromorphida nowadays. Vampire Squid is the only survivor in this order. Their scientific name is Vampiroteuthis infernalis. Vampire Squid from hell. It's probably obvious, but they are not from hell. Well, there was a theory that said life would not exist below 550 meters depth because that's the abyss. You know, that's hell, basically. But pretty sure everyone knows that's obsolete, since we know a lot of animals live in the deep sea. And that's also the case for vampire squid. While they don't really live in the deep, deep sea like the one you might imagine, they live in an awkward region called the Oxygen Minimum Zone, aka OMZ. It's literally as is written. The oxygen concentration is really low, so not a lot of animals can live there. They have a medium-sized body with a maximum length of around 30 centimeters. Their color is relatively dull, ranging from blackish to pale red mantle with pale brown inner side. External morphology-wise, vampire squid resembles the serrate octopus. Both have a pair of fins. Both also have eight arms connected with webbings. They also have serrae along the inner side of their arms. These serrae are not sharp, by the way. It's just hair-like things, like a cilia. However, unlike the serrate octopus that have sucker along the inner side of their arms, vampire squid only have suckers on the distal ends. Vampire squid also have a full gladius, while serrate octopus have a significantly reduced one. Oh, gladius is their internal skeleton, by the way, also known as pen. Those who have cooked a squid should be familiar with that thing. They have a pair of long filaments that can be averted from a pocket. As with other cephalopods, they have beak in their mouth. They also have a pair of big eyes and a siphon. While a lot of cephalopods are very active hunters, vampire squids are not. They live in a low oxygen zone, which means not only their metabolism is lower than those in oxygen-rich environment, there's also not that many prey. That's why, unlike most cephalopods that actively eat prey, vampire squids mostly consume marine snow which are organic materials falling from the upper levels. They extend their filaments to catch marine snow. These filaments can also act as sensory organ. They might also eat carrions or even opportunistically feed on prey because fish bones were found on their gut. Although they might look scary or perhaps cool, they are actually very weak. Like I said, they are compromised by their environment. They have weak musculature and they don't have any weapons to attack. They are like a vampire that hasn't drink blood for quite a while, basically. They don't have complex chromatophores like some cephalopods, so they also cannot change color. They mostly move with their fins, so they are not exceptionally fast either. They also don't have ink sac, so they cannot even spray ink. They can invert their body like this, though which could potentially help deter predator. Their mantle has a lot of photophores, so they exhibit bioluminescence. They apparently can eject bioluminescent mucus as some sort of defense. But as I've stated many times before in my previous videos, everything has a cause in biological unit. They cannot do this often because of the low resource environment. Good news is, their color blends well to the low light condition of its habitat. Their life cycle is actually very unique among the cephalopods, so let's talk about it. But before that,
If you didn't know already, cephalopods are usually semelparous, meaning they only reproduce once in their life. Squids and octopus often stop eating after reproducing and die after some times. Meanwhile, vampire squids are heteroparous, meaning they can reproduce many times throughout their life. Each spawn can be about 100 eggs, and they can potentially spawn over 100 times throughout their life. Adults can potentially live for more than 8 years. Hatchlings are very small, only about 8 mm. Hatchlings are quite similar to the adult. They have a pair of fins, but they mostly move by propulsion with their siphon. They are also relatively transparent. Because of their low resource environment, their development is relatively slow. Unlike the adults, juveniles are active predators of zooplankton. Interestingly enough, as they grow, juveniles have two pairs of fins, but the pair closer to the eyes will be degenerated towards adulthood. We actually have some fossils that might or might not be related to the vampire squid, but there is one major problem. They are mollusks, which means they don't have a lot of hard body parts. What's fossilized from coleoid cephalopods are usually just their gladius. That means we are missing out on a lot of their body. And so, we're missing out on a lot of traits that could potentially be used for systematics analysis. That's why, a lot of the time, we are unsure where to put a fossil coleoid cephalopod, including vampire squid's relative. Nevertheless, gladius can indeed be used to determine what groups they belong to. Sometimes, we also find trace fossils such as impressions that can show the overall morphology of the animal, but it's still hard to analyze that. When we are exceptionally lucky, we can find some preserved trace of soft tissues, like this one for example. Now, most people might still be confused when looking at this. What even is this? What exactly are we looking at? And that's Completely understandable, of course. It takes someone who is familiar with cephalopod to deduce something from this. Now, from the currently available fossil records, we know that the Vampiropoda clade had diverged from at least Carboniferous, around 330 to 323 million years ago. That's the Silipsimopodi by the knee. Silipsimos means prehensile and podus means leg. Owen. Biden is just in honor of Biden, the Joe Biden, the United States president. Silipsimopodi still have 10 arms like squid, but the two longer arms are not enlarged. So perhaps they are on their way to losing their tentacles. A fossil from Jurassic, the Vampirofugians atramentum, a basal group of Vampiromorphida, shows the evidence of internal light organ and insect, which means they still got their insect in the Jurassic, but already evolved bioluminescence. We also found Vampironasa rhodonica from the Jurassic. That's the fossil with soft tissue traces that I've shown before. This one is definitely closely related to the vampire squid, so they were placed in the same family. Even so, they believe that these creatures are pelagic hunters. So vampire squids weren't always the somewhat passive detritivores like nowadays. Analysis on Necroteuthis hungarica had shown that they most likely live in bathial zone with low oxygen concentration. Necroteuthis hungarica was found on a layer dating back to around 30 million years ago, so they had adapted to this habitat since at least the Oligocene. While vampire squid is now the sole survivor of its family, there were many others like it. There could potentially be more too, since, as I've said, it's quite difficult to determine from fossil record. Fossil discovery is pretty much stochastic, so who knows? Maybe we'll find another groundbreaking discovery in the future. For now, let's just learn what is known. And. That's all for now. Oh, by the way, they were available on display in Monterey Bay Aquarium several years ago. I heard that doesn't last long because they are technically a deep sea creature after all. 
Anyway, enjoy your day.